Hey, what's going on? Jake here with Uncommon ADC. Today we're taking a look at the Jacob Creates Chickadee, and this one in the Miami Vices colorway, which is a color combination that I absolutely love. Have the JG10 on the handles and that pink Kydex sheath really look great together. One thing I did want to clarify, because I had it wrong for literally months, is the name of this brand. So when I first discovered them on Instagram, I was calling it the Jake B Creates Chickadee. I looked up a YouTube video because I was kind of obsessed with this model in particular, and that didn't help because they also called it the Jake B Creates. And so I figured, you know what, that makes sense. Jake do be creating, it's called Jake B Creates, but that's until I actually met Jacob in person. And I've met him on a couple occasions now. He's local to me, really awesome guy, but he did clarify that it is Jacob Creates and so I figured I would clarify here since I've talked to other people since then that also were calling it Jake B Creates. But in any event, on to the knife, you may have immediately noticed that this is a tiny fixed blade, only five inches in overall length. And when it comes to fixed blades, for me, I really like two styles of fixed blades. It's either that's not a knife, this is a knife, or a pocket dropper. And I don't think pocket droppers are really a category of knife. In fact, this one is sold with a loop. I removed it right when I got it. This one had a white loop, but it will match your sheath. And so, is sold as a belt knife, but I carry it in my pocket. A lot of the other knives that I consider pocket droppers are also like neck knives and things like that. And so how I define a pocket dropper is obviously the size. It's gotta be a smaller knife. Doesn't have to be five inches, six inches, six and a half inches is probably okay. The sheath plays a huge part. How you can carry it plays a huge part in whether or not I will carry it in my pocket. A lot of times with fixed blades, for whatever reason, you just get poorly done sheaths where you have tons of extra material, an extra inch on the bottom past that tip. Maybe you have some on the back, some extending out past these rivets. And so for me, that really makes it not something that's great to carry in the pocket. This one's really well done. I believe he actually makes them himself. You can see his maker's mark right here between these two rivets. And so really well done. It's also easy to deploy one-handed without it being mounted. Sometimes you can get fixed blades out one-handed. Obviously, if they're mounted well, have an ulti clip or some other style of clip that's locking it in place. But with other ones, if it's just sitting there, it can be pretty hard to remove from its sheath. This one has this nice fold here at the top for your thumb, and you can just launch that off in your pocket, and when you pull it out, it's ready to go. And so really like that about it. The other thing is gonna be the weight. Weight-wise, this one weighs 2.18 ounces with that sheath. I haven't weighed it with the belt loop because I haven't had that installed pretty much since I got it. But without the sheath, 1.76 ounces, so weighs next to nothing. And at five inches overall, you still get a decent blade length. We're looking at about two and a half inches on the blade, two and a half inches on the handle, so kind of perfectly balanced there. With that two and a half inches, I'm able to get three fingers on it. The third finger is a little bit falling off, but a lot of times I'm not holding it like this. I get up right behind that tip. You can pinch grip it. Pommel of that knife sits right in the palm of your hand, so really comfortable and a ton of control on there. It's not going anywhere because it's kind of locked in place by you pressing it into the palm of your hand. And so just a great knife to use. Now, obviously it's a situational knife. You're not gonna wanna carry this when you're camping or bushcrafting or depending on what you're using using it for, but for 90% of the things I use my knife for, this is more than sufficient, and it could be the only knife I carry. It rarely is, but it could be the only knife I carry most days, and it wouldn't have an issue. Now, when it comes to the materials, the price, that's a little bit hard to define in this video, because I'm going to talk about this specific version, but he's a small maker. He releases these in drops when they're ready. Usually there's at least a monthly release. And so each drop has different configurations. And that configuration is not just the handles. This is JG10. He uses lots of G10s and micartas. And it's not just the sheath, which usually either contrasts or matches the handle material, but also the blade steel, most importantly. And so this one's S90V, cost $190 but maybe you're looking for something a little bit more premium and there's a lot of steels in between here as well, but you can get a magna cut and it's gonna reflect in the cost. That one's gonna be a decent bit more expensive. Maybe you want something more economical and again, there's some steels in between, but you can get something like Nitro V for a decent amount less. And so you can really 
base how much you want to pay on the materials used. And that's not the only differences, although that's a major one when it comes to cost, what affects the cost. You might also see different finishes on the same steel. So this one's blasted and tumbled S90V, has a flat grind. Sometimes you'll see it with a hollow grind. And that's one thing I should talk about. This thing came razor sharp, sharpened at 22 degrees, really, really excellent edge on these. And I believe Jacob's sharpening them, them himself. And so it takes a lot of care to make sure you get a really excellent edge right out of the box. And so there, I've also seen like hollow grind. I don't remember if I mentioned that this one is a flat grind, but there's hollow grind. If you ever forget and you can't find your email where you ordered it, you can pop these scales off and just take a look. It will be etched right on the handle itself. And so it will tell you the steel on one side and then it will have his maker's mark on the other. But drop point style blade, I don't know if he's done other styles of blade on the chickadee, but I absolutely love this knife. When it comes to pocket droppers, this is probably my favorite. There's probably about seven or eight heavily in rotation and this is one that i just love to drop in like a jacket pocket a hoodie pocket it has excellent retention it's never falling out but easy again to one hand open and you can see you can drop it in your pocket and hold it in your hand and it takes up almost no space and no one's going to be able to tell that it's there when you drop it in your pocket and you're not holding on to it it's light enough that it's not creating this huge bulge in your pocket or anything like that and so absolutely love this knife would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below if you have one which configuration you went with i would love to get more of these but he also has a few other models including the hail mary which i think is the next one that i'm going to try and pick up that i would like to grab before getting a second one of these but it's the one that i definitely wouldn't hesitate to grab another one of because i like it that much but thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed the video consider liking commenting subscribing or joining the channel as a member they all help the channel out a ton i will link to his his website down in the description but do keep in mind that he works off of drop so best place to figure that out is either on Instagram or in his Facebook group and so I would follow those he might have a newsletter as well but I usually see him in one of those two places if you want to try and get one of his drops not affiliated with them like I said but that link will be in the description thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great one take care